Hello friends. Today we're getting a little foolish. Foolish, I tell you, because we're talking about something that is not a rumor. It is not a speculate, well, it's probably a speculation. It is not a rumbling, it is not a leak. It is not my prediction. I wouldn't dare make a prediction about the Nintendo Switch, at least not in this video. Um, but what we're, what we're gonna talk about is the possibility, I think it's a real possibility for Nintendo to eventually unveil a top box only version of the Switch. Now you might call me crazy. You might say, no, Nintendo would never take it that far. Yeah, they came out with the Nintendo Switch Lite and it wasn't a Switch because it didn't go to the TV, but they'd never go in the other direction. But wouldn't, would they not? I mean, why wouldn't they? I mean, look at, look at that in front of you. That top box is large enough to, or more than large enough to have, to contain the entire Switch internals easy. They could make it a lot smaller than that even if they wanted to. But that's kind of the thing is when you look at the kinds of cost reductions that we would be looking at to put out a Nintendo Switch that is small and also has all the same power of the Nintendo Switch docked, excuse me, um, then think about, think about all of the things we're subtracting. We're subtracting a high quality IPS screen. We're subtracting a giant battery. We're subtracting speakers. We're subtracting a headphone jack. And all that we're really leaving is the, the switch, the internals of the switch, minus all the stuff that makes it a, a tablet or a screen. And then we're adding, you know, a couple of USB ports, HDMI cable. We're leaving the, uh, the USB-C port for charging or uh, power. And that's it. And then and we've got our whole unit right here. It's no larger really than something like an Apple TV. And it does all the normal stuff that a Switch does. Uh, you can pair any of the controllers with it. So they could go, you know, this direction or they could go more of the direction of the, like a Switch Pro where it's a, a you know, a more powerful unit. Maybe it can do some fancy uh, 4K upscaling. That's kind of the, it's kind of the like, vibe right now that everybody's getting or kind of a rumor that's happening is that Nintendo is going to be going heavily into the DLSS with Nvidia and that's all very interesting. That's not exactly what I'm talking about right now and what I'm speculating about. I'm just saying that what if Nintendo like soon, like very soon were to unveil a possible top box version of the Switch and why might they do that? Well, I think they would probably do that to give people a really low priced point of entry into their software catalog. I mean, essentially you sell these consoles to sell software, right? Right. So with people out there, I mean, think about how many people you know. I certainly know a lot of people like this that are like, you know, I kind of want a gaming console, but I don't really want to pay like three or four hundred dollars and I'm not really sure what I'd play. I'm just kind of curious about video games these days, but I'm not, you know, I'll just wait for something to be really cheap before I go in. Well, this could be that really cheap thing. And how cheap could it go, do you ask? I think it could go real cheap, like hundred dollars cheap. Um, if they made a Nintendo Switch that you could buy, even if it's only for your TV, for $100, that would be huge. It would be huge for the video game industry because you have a way in to a, a premier console, the Switch, and the library, the software library of the Switch. By the way, I'm, I'm going, I'm getting a green screen because I can't have my hand coming in and out of existence like that. It's probably not healthy. And it was funny for a while, but now it's just kinda, it's no, it's no longer funny. And it's not funny when I disappear either. It just can't be healthy. So 
we're gonna fix that. Anyway, you don't care. Um, where was I? We're talking about um, people not really wanting to splurge on like something like an Xbox or a PlayStation because the price is kind of high and the price is also kind of high on a Nintendo Switch. And the Switch Lite is a little cheaper, but it's not really, they don't care about handheld gaming. So many people don't care about handheld gaming at all. Um, I have a friend who has a Switch and he has never, he claims to have never undocked it. And his reasoning for never undocking it is he doesn't want to mess it up. <laughs> um, I mean, imagine buying like a, a smartphone and then saying, I, I haven't really used it yet because I don't want to mess it up, you know? Um, but those people are out there. They're absolutely out there. And you might, you may even know a few. You may know a few Switch owners that don't really undock their Switch. Um, I undock my Switch all the time. That's how I like to do it. But not everybody rolls like that. So what about all the people that just want the lowest cost of entry possible? $100. But here's the thing. If they were going to do it for $100 then probably they're going to undo or they're going to, you know, not sell it with a controller. So that just leaves the top box unit itself, um, which is, you know, a little different. But how different? Because Nintendo's done stuff like this before. Um, Nintendo sold me and they sold the 3DS XL without a power cable. It did not come with a charging cable. And it's not like a standard like micro USB or USB-C or anything like that. It's got a proprietary like charging thing. So Nintendo thought it would be a good idea to sell everybody a console without the ability to charge anything. So you have to buy the, the charging cable extra. They had a funny thing to say about it. They had a justification for it. And that was that, hey, everybody that owns a DSi or one of our older 3DSs, they've already got the right charging cable. So we just wanted to make sure that people didn't buy something unnecessary. Well, um, no, that's probably not really why they did that. They did that for other reasons. But this, if they were to sell this without a controller, it would be cool if it came with a controller, you know? But if they did that, it's probably just going to be $150. So if they, we, we talk about all the subtractions we talked about. We talked about, you know, no screen, no speakers, no uh, headphone jack, no battery. All we're left with is the guts of the Switch with some of these ports on here. And uh, that's it. So, and if we take away a controller as well, if we take away a set of Joy-Con and a, a Joy-Con charging grip or whatever, or we take away the Pro Controller, or even if we take away some kind of uh, scaled down controller, like a, a Switch standard controller, no matter what you do, you can't get it, you can't get it, prob probably can't get it down to $100, but if you just sell it without a controller and you just tell the consumer, hey, it's up to you what controller you get. You can buy a third-party controller for super cheap. You can buy this Hori gamepad that is wired for $20, or if you want to get all splurge town, then you can buy a set of Joy-Con and a Joy-Con charging grip. That would run $110, by the way, to buy both Joy-Con, which are 80, and then the grip is 30, and it's a charging grip, so you have, you have to charge it. Um, that would be your way of charging your Joy-Con, or unless you get some other, it, it just opens up the possibilities of everything in between those two things that I just mentioned. So you can get a Pro Controller, you can get an 8-bit Doe Controller, whatever Switch controller you wanna get, wherever it is on the price spectrum, as long as it's a functional switch controller, then you can use that. It's not, it may not have Amiibo support, it may not have Rumble, it may not have Gyro, but you can still play most games with it, with most of their functionality. So, and again, Nintendo has sold us things without a power cable. So, if they're ballsy enough to do that, then I think they're ballsy enough to do this. Now, again, I am not predicting this. I wouldn't dare, but is this possible for Nintendo to come out with a top box only unit, maybe even a hundred dollars? 
and perhaps without a controller, to just put that decision firmly in the hand of the consumer to decide you know, on this massive spectrum of controllers they can pick up. They walk into a Best Buy, they impulse buy a switch, and then the person at the checkout counter says, hey, you have to buy a controller with that. And they're like, oh, really? Uh, okay, all right, let's go get one. But at that point, they've already decided to buy a switch. See, that's a tricky thing Nintendo likes to do is they, they keep costs down and then they then you have to buy, oh, I gotta buy a micro SD card. Oh, I gotta buy a controller. Well, I mean, you're gonna get nickeled and dimed with a switch anyway. So this is just one more nickeling and diming of uh, forcing someone to buy a controller. Um, if you want the full switch experience, you're gonna have to get you're gonna have to get a Joy-Con and maybe even a supplemental Pro Controller. And at that point, just buy a regular Switch, maybe. I don't know. Um, but at some point, you're gonna look at all the money you're spending and you're gonna be like, ooh, maybe I should just get the actual Switch, because this is uh a lot to pay for just a top box. You know, but if you want to keep your costs really down, then you can do that. If Nintendo wants to do that, they can totally do that. Um, because the guts of the Switch in something like this that just pipes it out to a TV, it can't be that expensive to make. It just can't. Because the technology there is okay. But I mean, let's be real. A lot of us are walking around with cell phones that are probably rival the power of the Switch. They're just not, they're not used that way because they're, they're phones and we don't really use them to all their gaming potential all the time, but I don't know, guys. What do you think about this? Am I insane? How insane am I for thinking that something like this is a legitimate possibility? Or do you think that Nintendo might go more the premium route with this and sell a top box that is much more about the all the pro stuff that we mentioned, like... Um, the 4K upsampling, upscaling, anti-aliasing, all that stuff, all those bells and whistles built in to make the image look as great, as good as possible without actually meddling too much with the internals of the Switch. That would be really cool, but of course they'd have to charge more of a premium for that. But what about this though? Could Nintendo just keep the internals as they are for now and introduce something like this? What would it be called? I don't even know. The Nintendo Switch Box. Uh, something, I don't know. Definitely can't think of anything clever on the spot, but um, let me know in the comments how insane you think I am. I would appreciate that. And uh, thank you for allowing my hand to come in and out of existence without judging me. I really appreciate that as well. And that's all for this one, guys. Thanks a lot.